qu'elles sont si belles, pendues à tes oreilles. <rire> Pretty good conditions out here. Yeah, we are at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're on the bus to Bob. We're about to set up to uh, Appen, Scotland, to uh, set sail for Greenland. Yeah, yeah. There you are, steps and all. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the ground rules, Bob? <laughs> I don't think there are any. <laughs> <laughs> These are by homemade Greenlandic Paddles made from driftwood. The Inuit would be proud of me. It's all rather confined in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Andrew, it'll be quite snug in here. <laughs> How do you feel about your role as Tiwala for the expedition? <laughs> for the whole expedition? That's correct. <laughs> oh, <bugger. laughs> Congratulations. Andrew made me cut the slots in for him. <laughs> Yeah. Hand jugs. Do a pull up. We, uh, we may all want to use the Andrew holds. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Steve Bracho. I'm 33 years old. No, I'm not. <laughs> I spent the season in Yosemite last year and learned how to crack climb. Climbed um, the half dome with uh, Clinton and met Andrew. And so uh, we put together this trip to go to Greenland. I'm really psyched. I found people who were excited about doing it together and finding Bob was a, a huge windfall. Thanks to the Belgians who, who led the way last year or two years ago uh, with their expedition. And uh, we hope that we can uh, even come halfway to filling their footsteps. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is um, Clinton Martin Ningo, also known as Ningo. I've been climbing for about the last 20 years. In climbing, I never restricted myself to just sort of one aspect of the sport. I did a lot of bouldering, a lot of trad, and um, a lot of sport climbing, which I think gave me a good all-round background for big um, missions, which I'm more into nowadays. I'm Andrew Porter. I'm 36 years old. And I live in Johannesburg, which is where I've lived all my life. I am... Um, somehow seem to get drawn into big wide cracks and seem to enjoy them more than most others. Apparently the route we're looking at is going to have quite a few wide pictures on it so I'm actually quite excited about that. 
part of the equipment we bought for this trip was a pair of big bros which were used to protect big wide cracks and that's um, it's my new toy. We're about to set off. Here's uh, what we have so far. Walnuts, figs, tuna, tomato cans, canned carrots, chili, some kind of canned mince product, <laughs> corn, flour to make bread, hot chocolate, rice pudding, canned tomato, lots more of rice custard pudding, I see there. and lots of oats. I know what you are, my friend. And where you're going to, I see the light in you Whispered out into the gloom It changes, it changes The heart of everyone It changes, it changes The heart of everyone Oh, oh <laughs> Sweet. I've always uh, held the view that this far north passage of the uh, of the Atlantic is the meanest of them all. You usually get clobbered with at least one gale and usually two or three from the depression spinning up from Newfoundland to Iceland and Faroes. I call the, the halfway mark uh, Gale Alley because one's been clobbered by gales there so often. We're uh, right in the center of Gale Alley right now. Fearsome uh, stormy section of the Atlantic. Things are tough. Yeah, there's clouds all over the place. Haven't seen sunshine in five days. to buy a rifle for polar bears. Do you have one? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, it's upstairs. Yeah, safety That's catch. Safety yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> well, they come from South Africa. South Africa. <laughs> Are you freezing? Only Not yes. <laughs> Dieu 
qu'elles sont si belles Mon Dieu à tes oreilles Quand les bourgeons chantonnent les filles qui rayonnent Les pinsons qui fleurissent les filles s'adossissent Quand les tulipes claironnent les filles Walk around of Dodo's Delight, take one. It's Andrew <laughs> at the pilot's table. Just as tidy as it was with the Belgians. This is where Clinton and Andrew have their lair. Bob at the galley. A rare sight. <laughs> Watching up the rare, even rarer side. <laughs> as rare as he could make it. You notice the galley is just the right height for Bob. This is our stove on a gimbal. Clean and swing. Once. Yes, Bob's cleaned the stove. Yes. Our little tea tray. There's Clinton on Bob's bed. The captain's berth. The and uh, the captain's junk basket up <laughs> on top here. <laughs> First mate's bed. There's our whole bag. One of our whole bags. And uh, our trusty bookshelf with all of Bob's romances. <laughs> Sea romances. <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> some other books. There we have the bathroom, the head, quite spacious, ready. And then through here we have the V berth, which is Dave's bed. And here's uh, where we have all our climbing junk. Dave will have to cram all his stuff in this space. This is his bed. My name is David Glass. I've been climbing for 12 years. I uh, started climbing at university. I'm based in Cape Town, South Africa. I do a lot of sport climbing and bouldering and a bit of tri climbing as well. But my favorite climbing is safe climbing. I enjoy having really good protection and really good rock. So this trip so far has been uh, pretty exciting from that point of view. What's your, what's your biggest fear on the wall? Well, not running out of food because we packed a lot of food. <laughs> I think coming back alive is, is really uh, my number one priority. <laughs> Water and big wide cracks. What's your strategy on dealing with the wet chimney? Uh, Send out my strategy. I certainly hope that the chimneys are dry because uh, I think they put my name on them. Twenty meters gone, 830 to go. Boom. Does this bring back any memories of the Belgian expedition? Well, yes, it's a very similar track to the start of the Belgian route. Whoa. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Unlucky, it just hit the front. So, Tintin, you ready to lead this beautiful pitch?
Steve and Andrew are starting to haul. We've just uh, clipped together the hauling load. Once again, I've managed to uh, avoid the first haul on the slab. Win. Uh, you like one meter above the sea? One meter to go, did you say? One meter above the sea. <laughs> So right now, Steve and Clinton are busy leading an absolutely horrendous, horrendous waterfall pitch. We're on basically down the fourth pitch of the route as we've done it so far. The rock is really, really poor quality. Let's take a look at how nasty it is. <laughs> oh! Oh! Jesus. No, it was another piece. Jesus, no one else totally freaked out by this. I'm a freak dad, but what can we do? Nice, nice, that's it. Yeah, nicely done. It's already been quite an eventful. <laughs> One <time. day. laughs> so what are you eating there, Steve? -o? I think chicken curry. Food champions. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Let's take a look at our buddies downstairs. Hey, say hi, buddies. Hello, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, night, night. Just sleep tight. Good night. Mm. Morning number one on the wall. We're up at camp, sort of Damocles. <laughs> a precariously positioned camp below loose fleck. And we're all <laughs> hanging on our portal edges on the same shitty pieces. Are you ready for a big day, Andrew? Oh yes. I've got to lead the exciting overhanging crack above us. Give it its name at least. A sort of Damocles or something? Damocles. 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 Sorry, I was concentrating on leading at the time and cleaning grass while you guys were discussing the name. It's a big, uh, it's a big bottleneck on our climb, and Andrew's gonna take us through. C'est dans une famille très pauvre de paysans qu'il y a sept ans en a qui la pauvre enfant. C'est dans une famille très pauvre de paysans qu'il y a sept ans en a qui la pauvre enfant. Sa mère rendit la main, la mettant au monde. Son père la traita d'une façon immonde. Viola dans un coin quand elle n'eut que dix ans, elle mit bas honteuse un monstre répugnant. Viola dans un coin quand elle n'eut que dix ans, elle mit bas honteuse un monstre répugnant. Il avait quatre bras, une senteur bestiale, à la place du nez, un petit génital. Il avait quatre bras, une senteur bestiale, à la place du nez, un petit génital. Les gens du village la crut en sorcellerie, chacun sur son passage se sauvait apeuré. Les gens du village la crut en sorcellerie, chacun sur son passage se sauvait apeuré. Son père ayant tenu de payer au Seigneur, il lui a mis en douleur. Son père ayant tenu de payer au Seigneur, il lui a mis en douleur. Un matin au château, le cerf fut emmené par le courroux du prince. Les pattes sont coupées. Un matin au château, le cerf fut emmené. It looks as if it's going to take you several more days. Is that right, over? Yeah, we are definitely going to be up here for um, a number of days longer. It looks pretty settled as far as I can make out, but you can never tell with Greenland weather. I better just go up and see I'm not going to run into this wall, ever. Why cornflakes, Steve? Because there are these precarious <laughs> flakes which threaten to uh, dislodge at any moment. <laughs> to 7 o'clock in the evening and the wall is just about to come into the sun to give us a glorious night of climbing. Tea first is important. Muesli in the morning. <laughs> you were snoring quite heavily last night, Devo. Really? You did one. I'm busy racking up to lead my um, pitch, will be sort of my red point pitch so far of the wall.
It's an awesome corner that goes for about 30 meters. The beginning of the corner, you have to down climb a bit and then climb up and um, the gear's not so good, so it's a little bit scary at the bottom. What do you have to battle at the bottom of the corner? <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this pitch goes straight off of Camp Cornflakes, straight above the hair dumping spot. <laughs> The middle part of the corner is actually, it climbs pretty well and you can climb through it really fast. It um, does get your arms a little bit pumped for the top, the bulge, which is a crux. And basically you have to go from a flared like fist jam, um, get your feet really high, then into these really bad um, sloppy um, finger locks. So they open flared finger locks. And then from there you like walk your feet up even higher, like turn into a layback. And it's really insecure, it feels like you could fall out. And then do a long reach up to the side pool. And then once you do that, you can like um, pull up and reach out to right to a good jump. And then pretty much the pitch is over. Good job! Well, for dinner tonight, folks, we have uh, a delicious meal of uh, BA. I'm told BA is a beef and ale stew. Okay. Lovingly prepared by our friends in the United Kingdom in the canning factory. <laughs> can just get it out of the. Oh, uh, come on. Uh. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> uh, Dave, are those fingers of yours clean? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Mm. BA, that's um, beef and ale stew. <laughs> what special culinary skills have you thrown into this dinner? Uh, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I tried to clean the top of the tin off before I opened it. <laughs> it is very hanky. That's very thoughtful of you. Yeah. Do you yeah. still use a hanky that you like blow your nose into? <laughs> That's disgusting, Andrew. Nose, like for about four days though. Because, Thank you very much. Uh, mm. There we go, the victor eating his beef ale stew. Well earned. The reason we chose beel ropes is that they're really strong on the outside and on the inside as well. <laughs> we, uh, we've we tested this one right through to the core and we found the core to be really strong. See almost not even one of these little smaller cores um, disintegrated there. They all held really firm. So at the moment I'm busy heating up a knife, making it nice and hot to chop the rope that Steve uh, broke <laughs> the day before yesterday when he was jugging over a sharp edge. Uh, okay, the rope didn't quite break, but the sheath was badly damaged, so we have to chop it now. Avec papa, maman, visiter la capitale, ce fut un voyage étonnant, un enchantement total. J'ai voulu voir le président. On m'a dit qu'il n'avait pas le temps. J'ai voulu voir premier ministre. I'll get it compared to some of the Yosemite stuff. Like the Harding Star tour. The Harding Star is one bitch Harding video. Um, this was more like Ahab. Uh huh. Just a nice good continuous fight with several beaters. Chicken wing was an old bar. Just too wide for the feet to get around to the footstep. Voir si y avait la momie de François Maurice Mitterrand. Je parie que tu n'as Paris ou par une advertance. Par là-bas ou par ici, visiter Paris, quelle chance! When I went up first, I didn't think it actually would climb because it was so rotten and flaky. And uh, the gear placements, uh, most of them I had to carve out the right width for the gear to actually hold. Um, and you could just keep carving and pulling stuff away and you never got to the back of anything. 
Um, so I came down after eating it really despondent that it might not go. Um, but uh, after spending a good lot of time whacking stuff off and shelling away rock, uh, eventually it did go, so uh, I'm pretty psyched about that. <laughs> the only way to travel in the mountains. Black diamond portal edge right here. The thing of beauty is you'll soon see. I'm about to set an amazing record in portal edge construction. Okay. People told me it can't be done in under 10 minutes. I'm going to show you in two minutes. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> About your egg. Oh, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a horrible topic. Um, we had our, our second bird mortality, probably, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I climbed up to a ledge and uh, a bird flew just missed my head as I pulled up over the ledge and it had left its uh, nest with uh, an egg busy hatching and uh, the little bird had its beak through the hole was moving around making little squawking sounds but uh, I think it could sense that there was a predator around <laughs> so it didn't come out the shell entirely and uh, when we left it was still there exactly the same so you didn't see what it tasted like no, <laughs> here we are it's day eight we're um top of the, I'm not sure what pitch, uh, <laughs> we found a really sweet little bivy here, a rocky bivy, on this little scree slope, and we've rigged up the ledge ledges, down. and uh, the guys have already gone up and done uh, two pitches above us, up about another 80, 90 meters. Dodo's delight, Dodo's delight, Dodo's delight. I'm getting a bit worried, we haven't heard from Bob in about five or six days now. Last time we saw him, he was having some trouble with his anchor chain, <laughs> as well as with the engine. He said it was leaking oil badly. Here on stance at the top of the, I don't know what pitch. I'm going for about six hours. We've hauled two pitches. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hasn't been the best <laughs> hauling day Hasn't so been far. The best hauling day. Yeah, we'll be on the summit later on today. Looking forward to getting off this wall. Woohoo! You know it. Shimmy, 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 shimmy
Le chocret le crépitement du bois se consumant. Dans ma maison qui sent les pilers au réveil, un plat de cerises au soleil, simplement car il y a toi dedans. Y'a pas de jardin sous mes fenêtres Pourtant j'entends gazouiller sur les pâquerettes les pélicans Y'a pas de jardin sous mes fenêtres Pourtant j'entends gazouiller sur les pâquerettes les pélicans Dans ma maison qui sent les pilaires mon réveil Un plat de cerises au soleil Simplement cœur Y'a toi dedans So Bob, what do you think of the conditions? The conditions are not easy. It, uh, the wind has got up, it's quite uh, breezy shall we say, and um, if they manage to do this route in these conditions they would be uh, full of my admiration. We're <laughs> <laughs> busy racking up for impossible or terrible. <laughs> More importantly we're think... dressing up. We've got Heaven forbid, I've got thermal with this, 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 and a down jacket. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> How's the conditions out there? It's pretty windy, that's why I'm standing here in the cockpit. The war of doom. Baffin Island, first touchdown. I get to touch it first. But all. Okay, Andrew, you're up. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ninga. Gets the long one. <laughs> I drew the short one. Again. Huh? <laughs> I laid the first pitch. That drew the short straw. And uh, now Andrew's leading. Look up there. He's got the second pitch. And then Clint will lead the third and we'll go through a rotation. Andrew's got this nice looking corner. Nail's gone blue. We're trying to go blue. Doesn't look too bad actually. There is a light way back there in the little bay. Here's Andrew, be laying Clint. Yeah, we'll get to you, Clint. <laughs> Clinton just led a spectacular last pitch, which you can't see, but it's over the edge there. It's uh, probably will help us one in the morning. And we're on top of our first climb on Baffin. Woo! First route in Baffin, eh? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. The Polar Mola is now officially open. J'entends les joyeux marmots qui braillent en leur nichant. Y a pas la moindre marmaille. Pourtant j'entends les joyeux marmots qui braillent en leur nichant. Dans ma maison qui sent les pilaires au vent. Je suis un peu mon
At last, we are rounding Point Barrow. Y'a pas de cheminée chez moi Pourtant j'entends le chaud crépitement du bois se consumant Y'a pas de cheminée chez moi Pourtant j'entends le chaud crépitement du bois se consumant Dans ma maison qui sent les pierres au réveil Un plat de cerises au soleil simplement car Y'a de soi dedans Y'a pas de jardin sous mes fenêtres Pourtant j'entends gazouiller sur les passants En automne y'a les feux qui tombent En hiver il y a de la neige Au printemps y'a les fleurs qui poussent Et en été y'a du soleil En automne y'a les feux qui tombent En hiver il y a de la neige Au printemps y'a les fleurs qui poussent Et en été y'a du soleil Steve has a big picture covered. I think we're in for another couple of days in the wall, probably. <laughs> Maybe more. Hey, the hold up today was not caused by Steve. <laughs> so to get that in the video. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hey, there's no hold up. Wait! wait. I'm going to check that and then I think we'll roll the headset anyway and see what it wants to do. I'm reading here uh, how to cope with storms. <laughs> We're expecting some wind tonight. Um, it says here, and when a breaking sea comes off a stern, a higher wind reduces the impact. 10 to 14 knots when surfing down a wave is quite acceptable on a 12 meter yacht, just to give some idea. <laughs> What's our high speed so far? I think in the actual water, probably like eight. And who set that record? <laughs> I don't know, I some so. like <laughs> some guy. So Steve, what are you what are you doing with your uh, climbing shoes there, mate? Are you hungry? I'm making uh, some new boots too. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken some fresh anasazis. <laughs> I'll season it with some maybe some nutmeg, <laughs> some cinnamon, and uh, voila, dinner for three. Guys, I, I don't want to sound like over optimistic here, but. So the Belgians climbed for basically six days, maybe seven, and they spent like three or three days waiting out a storm, right? Mm. So and like, they're superheroes. Carry on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but they were also like freeing all the pitches, so they were like. Yeah, yeah as we're going to be. Well, carry that's on. What we yeah. tried to do. So you're leaving that. That's that, that the real reason by the shipload of free. Is that like we want to free the pitches? Yeah. Yes. So like, I mean, and film. And film. And film. So we're gonna take our time. Basically. Yes. We're gonna be, we're gonna try be Belgians. That's why we're taking a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of embarrassing. We're trying heroes. to be people who like is the entire country doesn't even have a mask on. Like four hundred meters. I like that plan. It's like <laughs> let's let's try and be Dutch, guys. <laughs>